Hi, 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 hello, hello, hello. Uh, nice to see you here in the chat. We've got lots of friends. Lore's here, Wade's here, Umicorn, uh, Richard. Nice to see you all and welcome back. My name is Andrew Hockrottle and I will be taking you on the journey over the next two days. Oh, we're almost done. Uh, of our daily creative challenges here for Adobe Illustrator. We are covering Illustrator basics. If you are just joining us, we've been doing this for about two weeks now. We just have a couple days left and yes, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. Here I am. Congratulations. Uh, all right, so let's go ahead and jump in and talk about how you can get involved. The first way is to go right here at behance.net slash challenge slash illustrator. Um, our friend Wade will drop that link in there. And you can scroll all the way down and get the source files for any of the challenges. You also can watch the video to see the replay of those challenges. But today we're working with artboards. Um, we're actually using a version of the last challenge as well. So go ahead, grab this source file, and then you can get started with us here on the daily creative challenges. One more thing that I want you to know about, and that is our Discord. Um, it looks a little different right now because we are hanging out in the voice channel. So you can go over there to that link, bit.ly slash AI Discord. The last 15 minutes uh, of the meeting, uh, of the meeting, I'm reading chat. The last 15 minutes of the show uh, will be dedicated solely to you. Uh, it will be all you, any questions that you have, anything that you want to know, go ahead and hop into our Discord. You can go over here to Hangout and Feedback, and when you sign up for Discord, it will put you here. You scroll all the way to the bottom, and you will go to Hangout and Feedback, or you can type in the stage chat. Uh, you also can post your challenges up in the Challenge tab, which is where a lot of people have been posting their challenges. So go over to Discord right now, hang out in our voice channel, and I will bring you on the last 10 minutes of the show. All right, let's get started. Today's challenge is challenge number eight. We are going to be talking about artboards. So here's our challenge for today. Let's zoom in and see what we have. Learn how to navigate, create, and edit artboards in Adobe Illustrator, then use these new skills to create design options for a holiday greeting card. Uh, we love options. A lot of times clients will ask for multiple versions of things, um, and we want to make sure that they are happy. We want, we want to cater to our audience. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab this type, um, and it is arranged wrong, so we're going to go to arrange and send to back, and there we go. Uh, we're just going to group this together, right clicking and hit group. And we're designing pretty quickly today because we want to talk about artboards as soon as possible. Um, I'm also going to grab the scale tool over here and just scale this up. And for now, let's just work with some type. Let's use the alignment tools right there to align that there. And that looks pretty good to me. Let's go ahead and do a couple of these at the top and the bottom just because we're having fun. So you can make your card look however you want, uh, but what we're gonna do today is we are going to make multiple versions of this on multiple artboards. Now, what is an artboard? Great question. An artboard is the area that we are working that when we export will show. So think of this as windows. Uh, if we have a bunch of different shapes that are happening, if we have all these red things, right? You can see this gray line, that is the artboard. So if I click on this, it is going to turn black and that means that it is now the active artboard. So you can see right there, it is black, but if I click on another one, it goes gray and then here it goes black. So that's what you need to know is the black outline of an artboard is the one that is active that you are working on. And the reason that you need to know what you're working on is if I select this shape and then I want to align it to this artboard and I start using my alignment tools, it's aligning to the active artboard. So we want to make sure that the artboard is active that we want down here, and then we can align to that artboard. All right, so let's go ahead and make a couple copies of this. And uh, what we want to know about artboards is that we can make as many as we want uh, within the document and artboards are also able to be resized and changed as we need. So I'm going to make a copy of this text. So right here, let's see, let's lock that background right here. We have all of our happy holidays and let's do this. We want this happy holidays on all of our artboards so that we can present multiple options. What you can do is you are going to hit control X 
which is uh, copy or sorry, which is cut, or you can go to edit and you can go to cut. Then from there, instead of just pasting, we are going to get go to edit and paste on all artboards. The hotkey for that is Alt, Shift, Control, V. Everything you possibly could do. Uh, and we are going to paste on all artboards and watch what happens. Because we have designated artboards, it's pasted that same art in the same position on every single artboard. And now it's very easy for us to come in here and kind of play around with what we want uh, for our type. We can change colors like we've learned in some past lessons uh, and really adapt this to the way that we want it to look. Maybe we want one that is all one color. We can select all of these and just use the eyedropper tool to make it nice and bright. We do want that top to be a nice blue. Sure. Uh, so you can play around and do whatever you want with these artboards. And now we have four different options. Now, let's say that we didn't want to present the artboards like this. What we can do is we can actually reorder these artboards very, very easily. We're going to go over here to the artboards tool. Now, if you don't see that again, you can go to window and uh, turn on artboards right here. And it's, oh, it's right above me. I love when things are right above me so I can point. So you can see here, we have named our artboards. It's super important to name your artboards so you know what is going where. Um, very important. If we want to focus on one artboard, so maybe we like this blue one and we want to highlight it, we simply click right next to this letter, or right next to this number. And right there, it has made it full screen for us and you can jump around to artboards by simply just double clicking on them and you can see which artboard you wanna work on. So if you're working with a ton of artboards, it's very, very uh, helpful to name them so that you can jump around. Um, all right, so let's go ahead and uh, continue on here. Let's say that we want another option. Maybe we want an option on a white background. That's great, but we don't have any more artboards, right? How do we create more artboards? Who knows? Uh, I do. So what we can do is we're gonna grab this first one, which is just our tan artboard. And from there, we're going to duplicate this artboard because I wanna keep all of the assets on here. I can simply come to this little drop down menu and go to duplicate artboard. Anything that's locked will not be moved. That's important. Uh, I believe maybe the background is locked. Yes, the background's locked, but that's fine because we want it on white anyway. So this is looking good. Uh, I like this. Let's do uh, a couple more versions. So let's just continue to duplicate that artboard. Um, and if we wanted to, uh, we can reorder these. So maybe we want them to be two, two, and two. The easy way to do this, and we definitely need to name. So let's go ahead and make this one blue. Let's name this to white, and then let's name this one uh, all blue. Why not? That one doesn't look great, but we'll leave it. Uh, if we want to reorder our artboards to be in a certain order so that it is two, two, and two, we can go to this button right here, rearrange all artboards. And when we click there, it's going to bring up a dialog box and check this out. It is giving us so many options. It is giving us left to right, up to down. Uh, we can lay out all in one row. And so the columns are how many different columns, right? Verticals we want. And right now we have it flowing so that it's one, two on the left, right, left, right, left, right. Uh, I want this to be in two columns because I want it to have two large columns with three in it each. And from there, the spacing is going to be the space between these. Now I'm going to set that at 0.5 just to be safe. And then we do want to make sure that we have move art move artwork with artboard checked. Uh, this will make sure that everything that is touching an artboard will move with it as we reorder these. So let's hit okay. And boom, now we have them all reordered and you can see that this background was locked, which was an issue. So if you have any problem with that, we're going to control Z to undo. And then I'm going to go to object and unlock all. If there are things that are locked, they will not reorder, they will not move. So let's go ahead and unlock all and let's try that again. Let's rearrange all artboards and then hit okay. And now we have two columns of three. Looking pretty good there, right? Um, now, let's go ahead and uh, do something else. Maybe we want to do a vertical version of one of these. Maybe this one wants to go vertical. That's super easy to do, and there's a couple ways that we can do it. The first is that we can use the artboards tool, which is right under here, right above the hand tool. We can click on the artboards tool, and you can see now that all of my artboards can be selected. If I wanna resize, I can simply click and drag these in so that they're a little bit closer, and then I hit V, 
or just click out or I can hit enter or whatever. Uh, you can hit anything and it will get out. And now you can see that the artboard has changed. So now the artboard has turned into a new size. Now let's say we want this to be vertical. With the artboard tool, we can grab the artboard tool and select that artboard. So whatever is in the outline is what is selected. So you can click right here and we're going to select it. And then this is magic. We can hit enter. Watch this. Boom. So enter brings up all of the options that we want. So if your artboards haven't been named, if you're in all kinds of craziness, you can do it all here. So the orientation, we want to change to vertical uh, right here. So it is now instead of four by six, it is six by four. Um, we can constrain proportions. If we were going to change it, uh, we're not doing any of those. If you're working with video, you can do safe areas. You don't need to worry about pretty much any of this other than if you want to change the size of the artboard. So we're gonna hit okay and watch what happens. Boom, now our artboard is vertical, but things are a little bit wonky. Because we still have the artboard tool selected, we can click and drag this artboard to move it and it is going to move the art with it. And it was overlapping that yellow a little bit so it grabbed it, uh, but that's okay. So let's go ahead and bring this up right there. There we go. So now we can scale this down and we have a vertical version. Now, what if we want a shape to be an artboard, right? What if we're working in chaos and we're just like, I don't know, I want one that's like this size and then let's throw some art on top of it. And uh, I think that that looks good. All right, cool. Let's export it. There's no way to export this currently, uh, right? These are just shapes that are floating in an abyss. Check this out. What we can do is we can actually click and go to object artboards and convert to artboards. So watch this, boom. Now that shape that I had selected is an artboard. So if you ever wanna make your own shapes or your own sizes, you can do that using the rectangle tool and you can click and it will bring up a dialog box. So maybe we want an eight and a half by 11, which is a standard size piece of paper. And we're going to hit okay. So this looks great. We can drop some art on here. Uh, maybe we want it to like tile or something. All right, let's just do a couple of these, why not? Sure, but we wanna export it now. We can click on the shape that we know is eight and a half by 11 because it says up here and we can go to object artboards, convert to artboard. So there we go, it has converted to an artboard. Now the fun thing is we have all of this chaos, but we can always come back in here and click to reorder and maybe this time we want it in three columns. We're gonna hit okay and it's gonna reorder all that artwork for us. It's gonna move everything around and make it so that we can still work in a cohesive way with all of these different artboards. Now, there is a lot going on with these artboards. Let's go ahead and show how to export all of the artboards that you've worked with at the same time, right? Pretty fun. We're going to go to file, we're going to go to export, and then we're going to click on export for screens. This is gonna bring up a dialog box. And when I'm working with artboards, I usually do all of my naming here after the fact. So we're missing a couple, and this is going to be a landscape. And then this one is going to be paper size. So that's looking pretty good. And the options that I want, I want it to include all, uh, I have it set to go to the Daily Creative Challenges folder. You can select where you want yours to export to. And then we want it to uh, not create subfolders, but we are going to export multiple versions of this, right? So this is where it gets exciting. All right, I'm excited. So we have 72 dpi for a PNG format. Great, we're gonna keep that one, love to see those. But we're also going to add a scale. Maybe we want to see a JPEG. So we can click on JPEG 100 and now it has created JPEG 100. The suffix, uh, you can put in here and you can put any kind of name that you want on there. And you also can designate the scale. So maybe the JPEGs are going to be for print, so we want those to be at 300 DPI. And that's the standard for print is 300. Now maybe we want one more and we want these to be editable vectors. So we can click on add scale and then go to SVG and that is going to export it as a vector. So we can add a prefix in here if we want. Um, and I think that maybe we will, uh, uh, it's going to export as challenge artboard. So with the names, what it's going to do is it's going to export these names because it is exporting each of the artboards and keeping that name. So I'm gonna hit export artboards, magic. There's magic happening. 
There is magic to do just for you. All right, so it has exported, and check this out. Uh, I'm going to bring over my window right here so that we can see it. Uh, let's change over the view so we can see these large icons. And you can see, my goodness, it has exported a JPEG, a PNG, and an SVG of each of our different artboards. Check it out. The names are already there. I just exported a ton of different files without having to really do much, right? So as long as you name your artboards and keep them in check, you can go over to file, export, and export for screens. You can fix up the names of your artboards and when you export, everything will be named, everything will be sized in whatever you designate it to be right over here in this panel. Uh, so that's all we have about artboards. Let's go ahead and uh, take some questions and see what you want to know about today's lesson.